Our next talk is um, by Yao, Yao Montino. I'm pretty sure I messed up your name. I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> His team made uh, one of the most surprising uh, contribution because they did not use machine learning. They used a very intelligent network theoretical methods uh, and just that without neural networks. So that's why uh, we decided to award them with a, a special prize. And I'm very much looking forward to your talk now. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mario. Thank you for organizing this and for, for inviting me here. Um, don't worry about the name. It's a very complicated uh, Portuguese pronunciation. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so we, we, my name is João Moutinho. This, this work was done in collaboration with uh, Bruno Coutinho and Lorenzo Buffoni. We are all, all researchers in the Physics of Information and Quantum Technologies group in, in Portugal. Um, I am also a PhD student in the IST, so the, uh, an engineering uh, university in Portugal. And we mainly work on, on quantum computing, but actually one of my projects, uh, which I will reference you know, briefly later on, uh, is on doing link prediction in a, a quantum computer. So this is sort of where my knowledge about this topic uh, comes from. And, and, and some of that knowledge was used here, although we, we didn't use any, any technique from uh, from quantum computing or any, anything like that. Um, so anyway, let's let's move on. Um, one of the advantages of being, you know, one of the last speakers that I can skip ahead on the, the setup, which I'm sure you're tired of hearing about. And let me tell you a bit about some preliminary data, data analysis that we did. Uh, this has also already been mentioned before with the nice uh, pirates and, and, and blinds name that, that was given. Um, and this was one of the first things that we noticed was that in the, the um, these potential new links that, that we must order this, this list, um, we started by computing the, the degree of the, of the nodes. And um, like many of you, we identified that there are, uh, uh, there's a, a large quantity of, of uh, links specifically in this pirates scenario where you have to connect one uh, node with degree equals to zero with one uh, with degree uh, greater than zero. So one that is already connected and one incoming node. Um, so this was all, uh, uh, immediately an important thing that we noticed. Um, so, and I, I will explain that later. But so then the second thing that we did uh, um, in terms of preliminary data analysis was to study the degree distribution of the network. So this is a popular thing to do in, in network science. And so uh, let me give you an example. If you have a set of nodes and you just connect them randomly, um, essentially you will get a Poisson distribution on the, uh, on the degrees. So this degree distribution just tells you that given some um, nodes that you select, what is the prob probability that it will have a certain degree? Um, and for many years, it was thought that most networks followed this type of distribution. But eventually, it was found that um, networks actually follow uh, have a scale-free structure. Uh, and what this means is that the degree distribution follows a power law. So essentially, uh, um, you have a lot of nodes with, with, that are very uh, have a little a number of links. And then you have uh, um, a significant number of nodes that, that uh, have um, a very large degree. So these are very large hubs in, in the network. Uh, and typically, this, is, this can be characterized by this uh, k to the minus gamma. And usually in real networks, I, I, gamma is between 2 and 3, um, maybe going up to 4. So this was the first thing that, uh, the second thing that we did was, uh, okay, so, sorry, before that, uh, like, like I was saying, this, uh, this creates large hubs in the network, and this is something that can be explained with a, a preferential attachment uh, process. So the degrees that are coming into the network, they will connect to other, uh, um, the nodes that are coming in, they'll connect to other nodes with a probability that is proportional to the, the degree of, of the node. So this will create these large hubs in, in the network, which will lead then to this uh, power law degree distribution. So then the second thing that we did was to, to study this degree distribution for the data set that, that we have, both for the 2014 um, uh, data set and the 2017 data set. And um, the, we found that the tail of the distribution actually 
uh, follows pretty closely uh, power law, in this case with gamma uh, close to two. So this is really close to sort of the lower bound in, in real networks. And what this means is that this is really extremely scale free, an extremely scale free network. So it will really uh, almost for, sh for sure uh, admit uh, um, a preferential attachment mechanism that is very strong. And so then uh, uh, we started thinking about methods, um, uh, methods to do actual link prediction. And we wanted to really start from the most simple principles and then sort of build up our methods uh, um, as we move forward, um, but trying to keep everything very uh, simple and, and intuitive. So for the first part, we'll just forget about the timestamps of the network. We just have uh, some graph, which is given by this edge list in the, in the data, and we just build an adjacency matrix with, with that data. Uh, in fact, this adjacency matrix is, in, in this case, uh, in this example, I say that the values are one, but actually, as many of you notice, many um, nodes are connected uh, more than once over time. So in the end, we do still get a weighted adjacency matrix. Um, and so given our analysis of the degree distribution, we wanted to use to start uh, our methods with a preferential attachment mechanism. And typically the score in link prediction is just to multiply the, the degrees of two nodes uh, to score their, their probability of being linked. But this assumes that the two nodes are already connected to the network in some way. It doesn't uh, assume that you are scoring incoming nodes um, to the network, which is the case of, of the pirates. And so then an option was to maybe add an extra term with the free parameter epsilon, where now you would have the multiplication of the degrees, but you would also include the sum of the degrees. Um, but it, we did some tests with this and ultimately just found that this epsilon, the best was just to set it to zero. And so in the end, the final score that we used was just the sum of the degrees. So this was our, our basic preferential attachment score. And so immediately we tested this on the competition and just you know, computing these scores for the, the, the sets to order and ordering them according to the, to the values, we got an AUC of uh, 0.897, which was quite surprising. Um, it, it was better than, than, than the baseline. And again, I mean, this is a really simple calculation. It has negligible computational cost and no free parameters. Um, but the, 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 the problem is that with degree, these are degree-based, um, uh, feature that we just used, it's, it doesn't include any information about the instance of nodes, right? Uh, and that's also an important topological feature in, in networks. So we wanted to also include some, some of that in, in, in our method. And this is sort of the area I'm more familiar with, which is path-based methods, which is what I've worked on. Um, and in path-based method, methods, there are these two ideas, and one of them is to connect nodes based on direct similarity, okay? So this makes sense in social networks, for example, where you think that uh, people who are similar to each other will probably connect to each other. And one simple way to quantify this is just to count the common neighbors, right? These will be closing triangles in your network, and this can be computed very simply as the, 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 the number of, of neighbors in common or in matrix form as the, the second power of the adjacency, adjacency matrix as also been mentioned. Um, somewhat recently, in 2019, um, a new paper uh, put forward the idea of connecting based instead of direct similarity to consider neighbor similarity. So um, nodes will not connect because they are similar, they will connect because they, are, they have neighbors that are similar to, to the other node. Uh, and so this is just taking the similarity measure that you have and extending it one more step in the adjacency matrix. So if you wanted to quantify the first case as uh, common neighbors, now you're quantifying this case as paths of length three. Uh, and you can just compute the third power of the adjacency matrix. The original method uh, also uses the degree normalization to this, which, which does, does help. Um, and so, like I said before, we work in quantum computation in our group. So if you're curious about what we do with this sort of uh, direct similarity, neighbor similarity. This is the paper that we put on archive uh, recently. But again, we didn't use any of this here, okay? Um, but ultimately what we found in this data set was that all path-based methods, they performed very similarly. There was no, like in some networks, you do see a big difference between paths of link two and paths of link three. This was not, not the case. 
Um, and so then we tested a couple of different ones and the slightly better one was the Adamic Adar um, index, which has also been mentioned before. This is just common neighbors with a, a degree normalization. Uh, and then we submitted this score uh, to, the, to the competition just without using the preferential attachment, just this score alone to, to get an intuition of how it would perform. And we got a 0 0.870. Um, this was not as good as the, as the previous one, still quite nice, but you should, we should note that, I mean, this is ignoring all the pirates in the, in the, in the ordered set, right? Uh, and then we just, next thing to, to test was just to combine these two. And I mean, the simplest way to do this is just take the, the, the score, like the, the array of scores that you get, 1 million scores for both methods and do a linear combination of the two. And this is what uh, normalized, of course, we would normalize the score. Um, and so we just introduced the free parameter to do a linear combination of the two. And then we just did a grid search of this parameter on the training set. Um, we found some value in this case 0 0.92, which we used then for the our third submission, uh, which actually gave a, a nice improvement over just the preferential attachment method. So this does indicate that although this network really favors the 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 preferential attachment mechanism, uh, you sh the, the the information about no distance and, and common neighbors is still an important feature to consider. Um, and now part two is that so far we have completely ignored the timestamps in the network. And now we would like to take that into consideration. And we would we still wanted to keep our method somewhat uh, uh, simple and just use network uh, theory. Um, and so we decided to just build um, a, a time weighted adjacency matrix. So instead of um, uh, uh, assigning uh, each link with the same weight, we would change their weight. Um, and of course, this information about the times can, can be important as already has been mentioned uh, in other talks where old links may, may represent, for example, rooted concepts in the network, um, like some of the early papers uh, uh, that maybe have a lot more citations over the years. And new links are uh, the odd topics uh, in, the, in, in the field. Uh, and so what we did was just to take the timestamp of each link, normalize it between for a value between zero and one. And then we define the function uh, depending on some parameters that would take in these this, uh, this time weights and, and sorry, it would take in the timestamp and then um, produce a weight. Uh, then the question is what is the best choice of, of uh, f of theta? And this can be a general choice uh, as general as you want but we restricted our choice to uh, quantification of our previous uh, idea. So we wanted to take this idea that uh, the most important links are older and newer, um, and we wanted to quantify this. And to do that, we used just a simple polynomial function uh, with four free parameters um, that, you know, this is able to, to capture these, uh, um, this idea in the case where you get a convex polynomial, but it is also, you know, it's, it's general enough that it will also find other 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 ideas that do not match these uh, this um, uh, these hypotheses. And so um, then we we took this function and the, on the training data we essentially just calculated the preferential attachment score that we defined previously, which was really efficient. Uh, and we just did a grid search of the parameters. Okay, so this could have been optimized, of course, but we this was just a, a simple test. So we maximized the uh, the AUC of the preferential attachment method by grid uh, uh, while grid searching the, these parameters, and these were the values that we found. Uh, ultimately, these were not the values that we used in the end because uh, we did also try some end end picked uh, variations of this set. And this was the, in the end, the, the values that, that worked the best. Um, so the, here is just a plot of the function that, that comes out with, with these end picked set of, of parameters. Um, and then in our, in our final submissions, we simply uh, went back to the methods we had previously uh, defined and we recomputed them, but now using the time weighted adjacency matrix instead of the, the simple adjacency matrix. And for just the preferential attachment uh, score, we got a small improvement. Uh, and then combining again the preferential attachment with the Adamic Adar index, um, with a slightly change, a slight change in the epsilon value, 
we got uh, our best submission, which uh, had a, a 0.918. Um, so here I just show you a, a summary and, and some summary and, and com conclusions of, of what you did. Um, so as been as has also been um, highlighted before in other in other talks, these degree based methods are really really quite good, and just the preferential attachment method at a pretty good performance with 0 0.897 and really negligible computational cost. Uh, and the, then just combining with the, the Adami Kadar without the time weight, so just this epsilon free parameter is again, uh, as a small added cost, um, uh, you just have to compute the, the, the second part of the, the adjacency matrix, but in this case, it's a quite sparse matrix. Um, and it, it gave a pretty nice improvement. So the introduction, the introduction of this time weighting function, I think it was a, an interesting thing that we, we found this convex this convex polynomial, which seems to agree with our initial hypothesis that the older and newer links are more important. We wouldn't say that this is like a very, we cannot really claim that this is a, a really an organizing principle behind the network because I mean, the improvement we got was, was quite small, but it's still interesting that, that it, it worked out. Uh, and it's still quite efficient in the sense that, um, uh, of course, you have to, to use some computational power to, to find the, your best function, but then to uh, compute the scores, um, it's essentially the same, the same cost as before. Uh, so this was our best submission and it, it, it achieved uh, fourth place. So finally, just to conclude, I would just like to make a brief comment about uh, possible future work. Um, and one thing that we were, were thinking about is that this current data set is actually a projection of a bipartite network. So if you think for it, let me give you an example, which will make this quite clear. Um, imagine this is, these are just three scientific concepts that are linked together, okay? So this would be like a very simplified um, example of, of the data set we are working with. Um, the way these, 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 these links happened were through some papers that came out, right? So you can imagine, for example, in the case of a bipartite network where you have two types of nodes and uh, you have blue nodes and red nodes. Here, red nodes are the papers, blue nodes are the concepts. In a, in a bipartite network, you only connect uh, nodes to, um, you only connect blue to red and red to blue. Uh, so in this case, one paper may, maybe came out and connected all three concepts, thus it would lead to this projected network. But in fact, that's not the only possibility. You can imagine that maybe there were three different papers, each one connecting two, two concepts, and they would both lead to this same projected network. So the point here is that when considering a projected network, we are losing information about the underlying system, and that can lead to um, issues with the data that you know maybe, maybe there is some rich structure in the original bipartite network that is being neglected, um, and, and maybe using that structure would allow for better predictions. Of course, I mean, this is a much harder problem to deal with the bipartite network, and I have no idea how, how you would do it. Uh, this is just, you know, a thought that we, that we have. Uh, and this has been studied before. One example is this paper here, which studies the degree distributions of bipartite networks and their projections. So in the beginning, I showed you some plots of the degree distributions that was of this projected network. If you were to do um, degree distributions of the bipartite network, you have two degree dis distributions. You have the one of the red nodes and the one of the blue nodes. Um, and then you can, in this paper, they show how you can relate those two to the projected network. So this is just, just an example. Uh, with this, I, I conclude my talk. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, and congratulations again for this very surprising result. Also, the last slide about the bipartite network, that is really interesting. I didn't think about it that we actually lose information, but yeah, it's totally true. Um, yeah. It's a very good point to think about. Um, so we have a question by Michael. Um, great talk uh, and really nice solution. Do you think your, solu um, your solution may not work due to the first observation that the power law uh, showed the straight line or so free, um, free scale or scale free networks? Um, yeah, in a way, yes. I mean, 
other people found found that degree uh, degree based features worked really well, right? And they didn't study the degree distribution. So you, you could you could reach that conclusion in, in different ways. Um, but it's it's it is a nice thing that you when you're studying networks, um, computing the, the degree distribution is an, a very nice indication uh, of how this network behaves and how it grows because um, it it's yeah like like, I, like what I saw was that having a very low gamma, so really close to two, which is sort of the lower bound for real networks, that really is a, an extremely scale-free network. And it, that those types of networks really favor a lot the um, uh, preferential attachment mechanisms. So immediately I made the, 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 the jump to use a preferential attachment method. So I, I would say that it was a very important um, thing to observe. Uh, uh, I love this how you got this idea that's very, very much um, goes into or goes into re to the direction what uh, Jacob said in the book before that usually we wouldn't understand when we use neural network, but you actually looked at the data from the structure and choose then what seems to be the, the most useful thing. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, in this case, in this case, it worked out. Um, of yes. you know, if you have if you have more complex data with a lot of features, maybe a simple analysis will will not work out. So in this case, yes. it's nice that it did. Yes, yes. Um, so you also mentioned in one case that you made a grid search over uh, your function, your four parameter function. I think that was the uh, the function that adds the dynamics, right? But then you actually chose some handcrafted values. Why was that? <laughs> so this was this was just uh, out of curiosity because we we did a grid search on the training data and um, and and got this function, but we thought it was uh, maybe a bit weird that we are we were um, like so essentially this theta zero um, is the, the the vertical shift in the function right so we were really putting the values of the timestamps like in the middle timestamps really very close to zero and they were pretty much not get considered at all uh, and we thought maybe you know this was a bit weird and since there were quite a bit uh, quite a bit of difference between the um, the training uh, data and the competition data like for example in the number of pirates and things like that we thought let's try to use these values but maybe change them a little bit and submit to the competition and see if 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 it changes a bit so in the end, we, we did just a couple of tries and this one that was handpicked, it did perform better. So we were, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's nice. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, that's another question by Fra uh, Francisco Valente. Congratulations on your very interesting approach. You are free parameter to compute the score combining PA and AA has a value 0 0.92. Doesn't that mean that AA is given much more importance uh, for the score, which is contradictory to the observation that PA alone performs better than AA? Oh, great team name, by the way. What was your team yeah. name? Ah, it, okay. it was there, there was actually a typo in the in the in the thing. It was Bakelink. I can explain that later. Oops. So anyway, okay. um, yeah, that's a very good point, Francisco. Actually, um, it, it was something that we discussed between ourselves. Um, while this pre-parameter does seem to be weighting the scores a lot towards the, the AA, um, it's not, the, the thing is that the, um, oh, I don't really have a clear explanation for this, but it made sense to me in this plot that I saw where um, the, the AA scores would get a lot of um, correct predictions in the, in the highest scores. Um, so you have one million, one million pairs to order, right? And what I did was that I plotted uh, how the cumulative, the cumulative number of correct predictions over these one million, one million pairs. And the, the, if you were to have a perfect solution, you would just get immediately from zero to one because all the first, all the first scores would be correct predictions, right? This is just to give you an intuitive idea of what I'm talking about. So this would be the perfect scenario. Uh, but then I, pl I plotted this for the um, Adamic ADAR scores and for the preferential attachment scores. And what I saw is that in the first top, top scores, the, the Adamic, the AA actually had very good performance, but then it dropped out. 
So it had a very good initial scoring rank, but then it sort of dropped out uh, um, towards the end. It, it, it would only reach the top predictions, like all the correct predictions really at the end of the scoring list. The preferential attachment, on the other hand, had uh, uh, worse initial predictions. So in the top scores, they were not as good as the AA, <clears throat> but then it, it went above the preferential attachment, uh, sorry, the, uh, the AA. So in the, while it got um, an AUC, a better AUC over the full 1 million uh, scores, the way it was distributed uh, was not the same. And I think that's why in this case, this free parameter turned out to be 0 0.92. But this is, I mean, I this is not a very good explanation. I think, you know, it's just the way the, the method worked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's also interesting also that you try now to interpret it in the terms of what those properties means, which is totally beyond what you could do when your results come from another network. So again, that's really, really a cool solution. I was very happy when I saw it. Um, so I think we are run out of time, unfortunately, uh, but thanks a lot for your contribution. Congratulations on the result and uh, hope to stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.